Okay, let me fill this area with basket weave. So the first thing that I do, and um, as I said before, this is a method developed by Chan Gear that is really, really uh, super effective. So I put a ruler across the middle of the work and draw a faint line there. Uh, I like to work from either side of that line to the outside. Then what I'm going to do is place the first uh, basket weave stamp on the left hand side as I'm watching it. Uh, in, it's a small uh, basket weave stamp. It's not a big area to cover so I'm not going to use a big one. And this first one I place diagonally across the line so that one corner is on the line and the diagonal opposite corner is also on the line. They can slightly step over the line but there it is. There's the first one. The next set of stamps goes from my left to right along that line. I overlap the two corners of the basket weave and the other corner in front there simply is just over that drawn line of mine again. And so that is how I do the first line of this basket weave. At the end here I cannot do another stamp because that would mean that I am over stamping that first border line that I drew and I don't want to do that. I want to stay right inside of that. I will creep up to that line later on but for now I keep well inside of that line if any stamp is going to go over it, I just don't do that stamp. The next one, um, all of these, the next stamps, I will do all of them in rows from right to left on top of that. Um, and that doesn't matter which side I'm working on, even if I flip the leather around, I will still work from right to left doing all the rows like that. They um, align themselves automatically at that point and that's what makes it so nice. Um, so what I do with the very first one is just first mark where that stamp will be uh, because when I place the second one I want to be able to know in which direction to swing that to while well, keeping two of the corners overlapped. So I mark the first one. That's where I did my last one. I'm now going from my right to my left for the next row of stamps. I mark the first one to see how wide to swing that angle. Overlap those corners there. And that's where I do the next row. I can put that one in in the planning. Now also that one. I'm still not near the edge so here goes the second row that I do from right to left. My right to my left. Here I'm careful, if I see that I'm going to overstamp, I don't do that particular one. All of these are going to overstamp the initial border line that I drew. That one will not. Okay, so what I do at the border where I don't want to overstamp my, f my first outline, I simply lean this tool over so that it still makes an impression but it fades to nothing and there's nothing on the other side of that borderline. 
there we go on this corner here I can make one full impression there another full impression there right now I flip the leather around so that again I can work from right to left um, I can put these in at an angle there we go now let's do a full row here I mark where that one will be positioned it'll go there but it'll also overlap so I lean it over a bit there's the first full stamp that I can do and I do one row from right to left okay let's see if this light situation works better um, better than my headlamp I just hope I don't have extra shadows um, I'm going to put a simple border around the basket weave with a camouflage tool a fairly small camouflage tool um, because the other detail is not very large so I use that outline that I drew originally and that goes right on the inside curve of the camouflage tool right there so that um, I overstamp some of the basket weave the line is stamped over and not visible anymore and the background remains very clean For the second sheath I've chosen another favorite basket weave stamp, the square one, and this is the small version. Each stamp turned 90 degrees. What I did find with this one is um, to really make it really work well is that you do every one of those stamps twice. So I'm first going to do the whole one, uh, cover the whole one, and then I come back and redo every single one of them. Like this. The burnishing is better on them, and the detail improves. For the border around this basket, we've, I'm going to use a fine veiner. Uh, to do that as well as a bit of a, a bevel Once the beveling is done, I now put the veiner to work, put the outside curve of the veiner um, on the line so that it points towards the middle of the design and then I tilt the tool so that I only use half of it to do the work with and as that line of mine turns I also turn the veiner 